You know, as they say, sometimes you need to look at the same thing from a different perspective to truly appreciate what's in front of you. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do through this program. Welcome back. I am Nishtha Bichlani, your coach for Prop It Up. By now, you're already aware that we'll be using props starting today. Through these upcoming sessions, you will be revisiting a lot of familiar asans, but with the addition of props. I want you to start observing how the same practices now start feeling a little different. And well, as you know, I have a health tip for you right at the end of the session, so stick with me. On that note, let's begin. We start by centering ourselves. So before we get started with the warm up, I would request you to take the block or you can also use a cushion to sit on that will just make you feel upright and lifted in the spine. So I'm going to take this block and sit on it. And once you do that, you'll notice how instantly your posture is lifted. Your hips are elevated from the mat and you start feeling taller and more comfortable when you're seated on the mat. So once you're here, we'll begin by centering ourselves. You may just roll your shoulders to the back. Make sure the neck muscles are relaxed, palms turned up and take a few seconds to then slowly close your eyes. just here observing your body, noticing how different you feel now that you are seated on the prop. Take your time here to relax the body all over and bring your attention to your body and breath. Taking a few easy breaths here to build that connection within before we get started. And taking one full breath here, inhale. And exhale to softly release the breath out. And when you're ready, gently blink and open your eyes. Let's get started with the warm up. We'll first begin with a few neck movements, a little lateral bending of the neck. So start by bending your neck to the right side and then you take the hand from the top and gently press it down. Once you do that, take the second hand on the mat on the side and allow a nice little release to take about here, starting on the side of your neck, going all the way down to the fingers. Breathe. And then slowly release and change to the other side. Switching, bending the neck on the other side. And come back. Let's repeat. Bending the neck. Hold and let's change once again. Great and slowly then release. Now we'll go for the second neck movement here wherein once again you'll bend the neck to the side, add the hand the same way but take the lower hand this time up at shoulder level and when you do that flexing at the wrist and hold it here. Staying. Great. Drop the hand down and release. Let's repeat the same on the other side. Bend the neck, add the hand from the top and press in. Stay here. Now let's take the hand at shoulder level, flex from the wrist joint. And then slowly release and come back out. Great. And the last neck movement that we're going to go for is by taking the palms to the back of the head neck. Interlace the fingers and inhale to look up and exhaling take the chin down into chest again inhale open look up exhaling down in last time 
inhale and up exhaling bringing the chin back down and slowly then bringing the head back up release the hands great now we're going to move into gomukhasan first we'll adjust the legs in gomukhasan taking the l taking the heel by the side of your hip and adding the second leg so you can start whichever side you like now once you arrange your legs we'll go for the hands and what will make it more comfortable in case you can't bind your hands and your fingers can't meet the best is to take a strap to meet your hands at the back so those of you who can catch the fingers comfortably go for it as it is those who require a little help with the strap you can take your strap a scarf dupatta whatever you have today and hold it to fill up the gap at the back and let's stay here so we'll hold it here for a few easy breaths in gomukhasan take another 2 to 3 breaths great and now from here we're going to bend to the side so right now as you can see my right arm is on top i'm going to then bend to my left side so bending to the side and we'll be here for 5 4 3 2 1 and come back then slowly release just the hands and then bending to the opposite side now i'm going to slide my hand the other way and take the second hand coming on top and let's hold 5 4 3 2 1 very nice and slowly release come back now let's switch the legs so i'm taking the other leg down and you'll notice this is so much more comfortable to do on a block because your spine is now able to stay upright right so once you've adjusted your legs once again now switch the hands so if you had your right hand on top now take the left hand on top so i'm going with my left hand on top catching the fingers behind directly or with the help of a strap so once you're here check spine is lifted chest is open make sure your head neck is not craning or being pressed down aligning the body close your eyes and hold last two breaths great and now if your left hand is on top you will bend to the opposite side or vice versa hold it 2 3 4 and 5 slowly then release and come back out and take that hand sliding out at the side the other side and laterally bending hold 2 3 four and five then slowly release and come back out great now you can release the legs and you can sit normally in a cross leg position and now we're going to use the strap or the substitute that you may have as a scarf or dupatta and we're going to go for what is known as the shoulder floss wherein you are going to mobilize your shoulder joint all of this that we are doing is going to prepare us for the peak pose that we have later towards the end So I have uh, doubled up my strap because I don't need so much length so you can see there's a buckle you can also make your dupatta scarf or whatever that you have a little bit shorter so it's more comfortable for you now I'm holding here as you can see wider than shoulder distance so see the distance my hand grip is a bit wider than my shoulder distance and once I've adjusted that we start by raising the arms from the level of the knees inhale first just bring it overhead Now notice how you feel here. If you feel your hands are too wide, too close, make the change. And so we prepare ourselves to go to the back but halfway. Try not to go beyond your upper spine. Don't have to take it all the way down. And exhale to slowly then bring the hands back down. Right? This is the movement. Let's go inhale and up. Nice and slow. Make sure not you're not struggling. accordingly adjust your distance that works for you make sure you don't have to bend your elbows and do all of this the distance should be just perfect for you exhaling out let's continue continue this for another four rounds make sure you're breathing inhaling as you go up and exhaling as you go back down 
last two rounds inhale and open and exhaling back down last one time inhale as you open and exhaling slowly bring it back down great i hope you're feeling that difference in your arms and shoulders they're probably a lot more freer and open than before now you can lift off the block keep it on the side and come in a sitting position on the mat where you have your feet a little apart as you can see knees are bent feet apart and have your hands supporting you at the back we're going to go for what is known as the double 90 twist so supporting my body here I'm going to start dropping the knees side to side. Yes, very simple. Start freeing up the hip joint now. So dropping from right to left, left to right. And as you can notice, my feet are not moving. It's only the knees that are dropping from one side to the other. So the feet continue to stay wide. Movement is from the hip joint. Very nice. Let's go for the last six and five four three two and one great and let's come back to the center now we're going to come up in a standing position so rise up clear your mat space and we'll come in a wide leg stance for some hip circles so my feet are going wide Parallel, make sure that you have your feet parallel, toes facing forward, not to the sides. Once your distance is arranged, we're going to raise the arms up. Inhale, go along with me. From your right side, bend the body and exhale, take a full circle and up. Inhale. And let's go. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Last two. Exhale. And back down, breathe last round, completing the circle back up. So we finished the right five circles. Let's go on the left. Exhaling, freely moving all the way down. Let your hands move with you. Let the body nicely circle. Make sure you're breathing. And you have one last circle here. Breathe out. Inhale, complete the circle up and bring the hands down. Great. And you can continue maintaining this distance. So we go for our main postures, starting off with Trikonasan. Now for Trikonasan, which you are very familiar with, we are going to take a block this time and see how different it feels in the body when we align ourselves with a block. So I am taking a block in my right hand, so we start Trikonasana on the right side, turning the right foot open. Yes, make sure toes are nicely open, your distance is set for about three and a half, four feet. And holding the block in hand, as you can see, my grip is vertical, opening the arms up and taking the block this time behind the leg. So exhaling, watch how I'm placing the block behind the ankle in such a way that my shoulder wrists are aligning. So the block is not going so far, at the same time not so behind. Just beside my ankle more or less, where the shoulder and wrist can align. And then you can take your hand on the waist or probably keep it up in air. See whatever is more comfortable. And holding your posture here. Now few things we want to check so we can access this posture a little better. Now watch and be aware of your pelvis. Let us push the pelvis forward. The moment you do that, notice how the spine aligns. So rather than being here, we press the pelvis forward, open chest. Yes, so the block is giving you the support. Where your body is not falling down and you're staying in the same level. Very nice. Let's give it the last few breaths here. Stay aware. Keep observing throughout the session how different the body feels, how different the breath is. And then inhale, slowly come back up. Very nice. Turn that right foot in, switch the block into the left hand and turn the left foot open. Now once again, see how we're holding the block? Up, bending the body and placing it beside the ankle, right? Now imagine when you were doing this without the block, which is again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a difference in alignment. So very often when the hand comes on the leg, you end up collapsing, the body falls. But with the help of the block, 
you are nicely lifted your spine body is nicely corrected so once again place the palm on the block keeping your shoulder wrist aligned see how the second hand wants to be remember the adjustment we did pelvis pushing forward chest rotating open are you breathing stay here for a few more and then inhale pull the body and come back up great turn that left foot in and let's go into the next trikonasan variation that is parivrata trikonasan once again with the block now here also we will modify with the changes in block levels and how you can um adjust it as per your body right foot opens and the back foot will come at a 45 degree angle so your body is facing the front leg so you're open in the front now you see the placement here we want to make sure that the feet are not crossing so if you end up crossing your feet too much you lose balance so maintain right foot in right side and left foot in left side once that is done now because the right leg is open we'll hold the block in the left hand now as you start going down you can decide whether your block should be this height or this height or flatter as per your body all right there's nothing wrong or right about it it is fine tuning it as per your body so here i am starting by raising the block with the arm up and exhaling now when you slowly come down you can place the block on the inside of the foot or outside of the foot if you're losing balance by placing the block outside the foot and having to twist and losing balance then you place the block in here so make your decision see how your hand in your block where should it be placed after which you will start to take a twist be aware of your back heel my left heel is crushing into the mat making sure the outer edge is the pinky toe everything presses if you would like to open up your right hand do that make sure your chin is slightly tucked in towards the chest last couple of breaths here stay with me and very slowly inhale pick the body back up the block comes back with you and let's repeat the same on the other side so turning that foot in open the left foot back leg at a 45 degree angle repeating parivrata trikonasan on your left side now i'm holding the block in the right hand yes you're now more familiar with this let's take the arm up the blocks with you take the same height of the block that you did on the previous side exhaling going down see where the placement should be inside or outside the foot press your palm into the block push and twist while all of this is happening make sure the feet are not leaving the mat and let's stay back foot heel is crushing into the ground pinky toe is pressing if you like to lift your left hand up do that let's continue to be here very nice last few breaths stay firm and steady and take that inhale to come up very nice great now we finished trikonasan both the variations with the block let's move into the next one we're going for parshva konasan with the block start spreading your legs a bit wider all right great so we will need more distance since you're going to go in a lunge turn the right foot open and let's bend the knee and this time the hand will go behind the leg again with the help of the block so bending it in knee is facing in the direction of the toes right and we will then open up the arms and slowly bend the body you can place the block vertical you can place the block a little bit lower depending on how you feel yes so that your stance is correct your body isn't falling your spine isn't rounding yes small things we don't usually pay attention to so with the help of the block chest can be nicely opened up arm can be nicely extended up back foot is crushing into the mat don't forget about your back foot let's stay here for another five breaths and then slowly inhale come up turn that foot in let's change left foot open 
Once again, bend the knee first, come in here and dip your body to the side. Place the block behind the foot, adjust the height of the block and we will then slowly move into the pose. Watch how the spine gets a chance to stay open. Body is not rounding in crushing the back foot for the last five. And then slowly inhale and come back up, turning that foot in. Great. Now, if you would like to come out of the distance a little bit to release your legs, to relax your legs, do that. Keeping the block on the side and we have one last variation of Parshva Konasan. This time we'll be needing a strap because we're going to do the bind in Parshva Konasan, Badha Parshva Konasan. Right? So, you can take a strap, you can take a dupatta, scarf, whatever it is that you like. And again, go back into the distance. Okay? So, uh, very often, I know a lot of my students struggle with binding. So now when the binding, when the hands don't get to meet, in that case, the strap comes handy. Wherein your hands don't have to float, the body doesn't have to be out of alignment, you can get the grip with the help of the strap. We will now turn the foot open, go in the same way. Now let's see, I'm going to keep the strap now handy in the other hand. So if my right hand is going to go binding, my left hand will have the strap. Keep it here, I'm holding in the middle, bending the knee, and watch how my elbow is going under the thigh. Going under the thigh and remember the palm wants to go to the back, to the hip. And then the left hand is throwing the strap down, I can grip it, right? So make sure you are trying to get both the hands to come around the hip. You can start entering the pose by taking the elbow under the thigh, holding onto the strap, filling up the gap and then turning open. Notice how much freeness your spine has now. How well your chest can rotate facing up. Let's be here last five. Very nice. Four, three, two, one. And then release the grip very slowly. Press with that foot. Create the strength by pushing and then turn the foot in. Great. Are you ready to do the same thing on the left? Now, turning the left foot open. Now you have the strap in the other hand. So I'm going to go binding with my left. Bend the knee. Make sure distance is set. You need to have a good far off distance. Taking the elbow underneath the thigh. First let the palm go towards the hip. Then tossing the strap behind the back. Grab in. Once you do, fill up the gap. Walk your hand. So that your hands get closer. Walk on the strap and rotate the chest. Very nice. Roll the shoulder open. Keep the chin close to the chest. Last five. And very slowly release the bind and come back up. Very nice. Now take a few breaths. Come out of the distance. You can keep the strap on the side for a bit. We'll come into Tadasan. Relax. Get the breath back. Notice how you feel. Yes, be aware of how your body feels at the moment. Great. And are you ready to move on to the next one? Now we're going to bring in the chair. Yes, the chair as a prop. You can also use a stool, a table on which you can basically prop up your leg at a certain height. You can also use a wall to place your foot on the wall. Now we're going to raise the leg at a certain height. And I'm going to first show you how we're going to do this from the back side. So you understand the bind. The same bind you did in Parshva Konasan, you're going to do the same bind on the chair as well. So here, let me first start off from the back so you can have a look at what the bind looks like from behind. Placing the foot on the chair, table, stool, wall, any such option will work very well. Now notice how my foot is placed if I'm using a prop such as the chair toes pointing up and then I'm going to first bend the knee, taking the hand going under the thigh, meeting, watch how I'm catching the strap from behind. Yes, so even if your hands are this far, you'll try to walk in, walk in, walk in to fill up the gap and then eventually we will try to straighten the knee. 
Now notice the gap here between the side body and my thigh. So in case you are like this, this is not going to be of much help to you. You want to fill up the gap. So reduce the proximity. Yes. And fill up the gap. Get your trunk closer to the thigh and straighten up nicely. And then we release. Yes. Are you ready to get started? So we are going to go for the chair assisted binds. So I hope you have your prop ready. Placing the first leg, you can start whichever side is comfortable. So get a good distance. Keep your strap in your hand. Heel is rested on the seat. And now you're going to bend the knee first. Pass the elbow going underneath. Notice how I'm getting my body to come as close as possible. Taking the second hand with the strap behind, tossing it. Look at both my knees. And then we're going to slowly straighten up. Notice the closeness I've been able to create. The chest opens. The hands come close to each other with the help of the strap. And binding is possible. Very nice. Let's remain here. Allow your trunk and chest to be open. In case you have a tendency to fall forward, roll back. Let's be here. Another five. And then slowly release and come back out. Great. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Turning around, placing your foot on the seat once again. We will start by bending the knee so we can fill up the gap. And bend in. Let your body come close. Take your elbow under the thigh. Pass the hand behind. And let's meet. Yes. So if your hands are here far, you walk it in, walk it in. And then get a nice grip. Slowly, eventually, start straightening the knee without reducing the gap. Notice if the gap is starting get to get created, let your body come close by bending the knee. So fill the gap, turn the trunk open, let's be here. Another few. Keep your chest rotated back, trunk stays open. We are in Badha Trikonasan with the help of the chair. Last three, two, one. And very slowly release and come back out. Great. Take a moment, take a breather because we're going to do this one more time. Now, those of you who feel that the hands are naturally meeting and you don't need the strap, Feel free to keep it out on the side and directly take your hands to meet. If you continue to use the strap, start walking your hands much closer on the strap to fill up the gap. Let's go for round two for the same. Once again, placing your foot up on the prop. Begin to bend your knee, passing your elbow underneath the thigh, wrapping your arm around. Let's take the second hand then with the help of the strap or without the strap. Then you will slowly, after this distance has been taken, your closeness has been maintained, then you will start to straighten the knee little by little. Also remember to press your shoulder back, to push your pelvis forward and to open up in the spine. Breathe. Continue to stay here. Last five. And then slowly release and come back out. Let's end this on the other side. Completing Badha Trikonasan with the help of the chair. Last side. Start by bending the knee. Going with or without the strap this time. Make sure you are nicely getting your elbow nice and low. This is only possible with the bent knee. And then you take your hands to go behind. See whether you're using a strap or directly holding the hand or the wrist, walking on the wrist or the forearm. Once you fill the gap, slowly start to straighten the knee. Very nice. Make sure the gap isn't being created. Rotate open the spine. Turn the chest open and let's remain here. Last five.
and then very slowly release the bind carefully bring your self back out nice and now that you have your chair or whichever prop that you're using in front of you we're going to place the palms on the seat and push the hip back to just lengthen the spine releasing any tension and countering the posture before a supported uttanasan ardha uttanasan with the chair feel free to keep your knees a bit soft here last few seconds and then slowly release and come back out great now we're going to come down on the mat and i'm going to ask you to take a block or a cushion as a substitute to sit on to we're going to move in for crown chasan like i told you we're getting ready for a peak posture and all this that we are doing in the form of binds with the help of other props is going to help you for the final posture that we are moving towards now i'm going to take this block sit on to it and we're going to first move into crown chasan right and i'm going to keep my left foot by the side of the hip keeping my right bending and we're going to then hold the sides of the foot here picking the leg up and remaining at this level i'm going to also show you a quick modification with the help of the strap now those who are comfortable to open directly will press the foot into the hands and slowly start straightening the knee but if this is causing your back to round like this then you will add the strap so the spine stays straight remember opening the knee is not as important as keeping your spine straight and this goes for all the postures so the modification would be to hold on to the back of the foot this way with the strap as close as possible with your hands then push and notice you're doing the same posture with great alignment without compromising on your spine so check how you'd like to go into crown chasan with or without the strap Remember it's the spine we are looking at chest open looking towards your toes and let's remain here for a few more breaths and slowly then bend the knee allow the leg to come down and let's do the same thing on the other side so i'm going to get my right leg down preparing for the left notice how the block is also helping you to keep your lower spine mid back nicely opened up so here let's grab the foot with the hand or with the strap see what works for you better pull the spine open and push the foot into the arms very good make sure it's the spine we want to lengthen so continue to keep the chest open looking towards your toes and hold the pose shoulders relaxed and very slowly then bend the knee and come back down great okay so once you're back out just relax your legs we're going to just come into a simple cross leg position now you can be seated on the block or you can get off the block as you like and let's just go for a easy forward fold relax yourself as we're now going to move into the peak pose sliding your hands forward just take a few moments catch your breath reset your head your spine and then slowly inhale lift your head and slide back up all right now the peak posture that is coming up is compass pose or surya yantrasana now as you notice i asked you to be using a block to sit on now why do we do that because very often when you are sitting directly on the mat and given a lifestyle because we have to spend so much time sitting on a desk sedentary lifestyle we tend to lose our posture and the back drops so when you decide to then sit on the mat you may be sitting like this uncomfortably with your hips really tight and that as a result may restrict your movements when you're doing certain postures so in case you feel like your hips are collapsed 
knees are lifted and the chest doesn't open notice how with the block instantly you can feel a lot more lifted so once the hips are elevated the spine gets space the belly can breathe and your respiration is happening freely so make a decision if you need a block or you're comfortable sitting on the mat as we move into surya yantrasan or the compass pose so i've got myself propped up on the block you can also use a cushion and keep a strap handy let me show you demonstrating you demonstrating the posture for you i'm going to now carry my leg up but before we do that let's prepare the hips in hindolasan so i'm going to pick one foot up with my hands as you see my knee is pointing to the sides and we start to cradle the leg left to right right to left left to right right to left just switching starting to free up yes this is one of the most important preparations of the posture it's going to lead you into the pose and if you're comfortable taking the leg higher up sway it up higher towards the face okay very nice and bring it back down notice how your back is feeling in all of this with the block without the block see what works for you make a decision that is good for you for your body and then slowly come back with the foot to the center now we're going to carry this leg on our arm on our shoulder so let's see here i'm going to prop this leg up as you notice i still have the chair next to me because this can also be used as a modification to comfortably help you access the posture here i'm going to carry the leg up on the arm or shoulder right now for a lot of us bringing the leg up to the shoulder might feel a bit too much you may have your leg rested at this height at the elbow perfectly fine what you can also do is use the help of the chair and prop up your leg on the chair by doing this you can pass your hand under the thigh right so the chair the stool that you may have can also help you to modify the posture now for example you've got your leg up to a certain point with or without the chair the next that you're going to do is move into opening of the leg into the full part of the posture with my opposite hand i'm going to hold the foot on the outer edge the second hand will come down so you can see this leg is hooking up on the arm and i'm going to push diagonally just watch the posture before you start doing and understand the intricacies of the posture pushing the foot out and allowing the leg to open then releasing now of course i understand that not all of us are going to be able to comfortably open the spine the leg at the same time that's where you will use the strap so if you have your strap dupatta scarf you can make a loop or you can simply wear the strap around the foot here i'm making a loop and i'm going to pass this loop on my foot now that will give me a good grip and i'll make sure the buckle comes on top tightening it okay securing it well and the same way you'll prop your leg up on the shoulder once again so here as you can see i'm carrying the leg back up or you can also rest it on the chair now this might already be a lot for a few of us you can modify it this way holding the strap with the opposite hand and staying here this might already be a lot for us so understand your body we're all really unique in our anatomy see what works for you this might be enough for today or those who are comfortable if you've been practicing you can then try to hold with the opposite hand on the strap as closely possible and then push the foot out with the strength of the leg opening out into the compass yes so this is the strap is doing the job of extending your hand and releasing yes so that was the breakdown of surya yantrasana or the compass pose now let's get ready i hope you've understood you've understood what modification works for you and we will get started to move into the same yes so you may start with your right with your left let's do it one time on each side join me picking the leg up yes and holding the foot we start cradling first so you can switch the leg cradle and cradling the leg up towards the face coming back down great once you feel you're ready 
carrying that leg up on the arm on the shoulder very nice remember you have the option of using a chair to support your foot then once you're ready here you can loop in your strap or directly hold with the hand so after you have picked your leg up see if your hand is ready to open the leg or you would want to use the strap so as you can see my foot is ready with the strap and with the help of the opposite arm i am pushing the leg out to open hold it by yourself comfortably for about 5 to 10 counts see if you would like to hold with the hand but if that is compromising on the opening of your spine and the leg then use the strap or even better modify with the chair once you finish your right side move on to your left let's go the same way one time on each side carrying the leg up nice and high holding with the opposite hand directly on the foot or the strap notice how the other hand is taking support of the floor and you are to push diagonally remember to push diagonally your face comes between your hand and your leg chest rotates open give yourself a holding of at least 5 to 10 and then slowly once you're done with both sides release and come back out great now from here once again you can lift off the block clear your mat space and you can come into a simple cross legged position and we'll go into a relaxed forward bend taking your hands behind the back exhale lowering the head in and then slowly inhale to come up now while you're here just diagonally extend so i'm moving my body to the left side using the right hand slowly come back i'm moving now to the right side using the left hand then slowly release and come back up right so we're now done with the practice of surya antrasan which was the peak posture of the session today now for a lot of you you may be using props for the first time and you may have had some misconceptions about props or maybe you may have not had enough information about it now let's clear a few doubts a few common questions that i usually receive regarding props such as are props only for beginners only for those who cannot do certain asanas well that is incorrect the main reason props are used is so that you can fine tune your practice whereas when you can do a same posture normally without props but with the addition of props sometimes your alignment just enhances and as a result your feeling or your experience in the posture improves so it is not necessary whether you're a beginner advanced intermediate practitioner props are for everyone at the same time props allow us to hold the posture for a longer period of time because in some practices it makes the posture a lot more passive so you can relax you can hold and you can enjoy the benefits of the posture a little better since you're holding longer so make sure you don't try to shy away from props or think that it's not for you have it as a part of your practice and see the difference it can make to you now let's move on to some cool down okay so you can clear your mat space here so i'm moving the chair out make sure you have good space now on the mat you can keep your block strap out on the side all right and let's get ready for some cool down coming into a uh, sukhasan cross leg position and we'll go for some lateral bending let's slide the hand out to the side yes see if you're comfortable to bring the elbow down adding the hand on top notice during the compass posture maybe the side of the body may have felt a little bit strained so we release here 
and inhale come back again exhale bend to the other side and come back great let's take both the hands going up rotate your body to one side diagonally folding forward and slide the hands in once again raise the arms up twist and diagonally fold and then slowly come back in great we're going to go for another seated twist here in marichayasan now i'm extending my left leg open and bending the right placing the right foot across the left knee once you have your legs in this arrangement we will then take a twist opposite hand so my left hand is hooking against my right and placing the right elbow against the thigh as you can see second hand behind you and lift your spine up and tall first and then proceed for the twist and then slowly release come back switch change the legs opposite hand goes up inhale so my right arm is going against the left knee hooking the elbow pull the spine up and tall and then twist and slowly return come back to the center now we're going to lie down on the back and moving into jatara parivartanasan Okay. Once you lie down, you will spread the legs open. Continue to keep your knees bent and allow the feet to come on the edges of the mat. Once you do that, open up your arms out on the sides and we will drop the knees right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right. Notice how this provides a good release in your lower spine. in the pelvis region in your quadriceps and completing the last one here then slowly come back to the center then you can join your feet and bring the knees coming up in towards the chest and we go for the second variation of the twist wherein you continue keeping your hands in here and then add a block or a cushion place it between your knees and thighs squeeze it in notice how my feet are active twist and drop going half way to the side inhale come back change exhale twist half way inhale come back repeat going for the last round here once to the right and left and then completing the twist slowly back in once you're done with that release the block we'll hug it up in pavan muktasan exhale up and release open up in yashtikasan take your arms extending toes pointing forward and pulling in two opposite directions to lengthen your spine and slowly release and let's proceed for shavasan we'll nicely relax the back on the mat adjust your body make all the necessary changes make sure you're comfortable like i always say the most important posture of your practice is shavasan should never be skipped Make sure the head neck is comfortably relaxed the shoulders the spine the hips allow the lower back to rest well completely relaxing your right leg your left leg relaxing your pelvis the abdomen and chest relaxing your throat your shoulders relaxing your right arm your left arm
softening up your facial muscles. Loosen up the jaws, the mouth. Relax your forehead, the crown. Just continue to take a few easy breaths here, letting the weight of your body melt into the mat, deeply relaxing, letting go of all the physical stresses, mental stresses, letting it dissolve into the mat. Gently then moving your fingers, your toes. Slowly start bending your knees one by one. Rolling over to your right side. And slowly push up. Coming up in a seated position. Continue to keep your eyes closed. Adjust yourself. And we'll take the palms, joining in for chest. Three chants of foam together. Inhale. Slowly then, rub your palms, cupping it to your eyes and all over your face. Gently open up your eyes. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this session. And by now, you're starting to understand the importance of the props and how supportive they can be to our practice. So today's tip that I have for you is to spend as much time as possible sitting on the ground, staying connected to the earth, staying low. Because of our lifestyles today, we have really forgotten, our bodies have started to forget what it is to sit down. A lot of us today struggle with sitting on the floor unless it's with the help of a stool or a cushion. So start spending some time, do all of your fun activities with your kids, with your family members, playing some board games, staying low on the ground so you remember your genetic primal movement that is staying low in a cross-legged position which actually has always come to us very naturally. So I hope you start incorporating this in your daily life. And remember, we love to hear from you, so don't forget to share your thoughts on our Facebook community, Stronger Together with Culfit Life. And that's me, Nishtha Bijlani, signing off. See you in the next one. For more such workout videos, download the Culfit app now. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are Cult.